Amazing. Cheers. Three more of these, please. Three? Yeah, well, you all need to eat. We didn't come here to talk at all, did we? You were just hungry. Aren't you? I have to admit, what we experienced back there has taken it out of me. Exactly. We need to refuel to discuss what we saw. We saw the hole. The ground definitely shook. Are we all agreed? Yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. Mm, oh, yeah. Agreed. Mm. So this phenomena, it's isolated to that hole in the ground. Mm. What's so special about it? Mm. I mean, couldn't it be a man-made hole? Like, maybe it's... Maybe it's been dug to the core of the planet. That would explain why the equipment was messing up. I mean, that's possible, but then the fox. How did it come back to life, climb out, then just die, and cook itself? This is good. Well, there are weirder things out there. True, but there's got to be some logic to this. This is all some pretty weird science fiction concepts. Duh. Well, that's what we employ to check out. Well, in fairness, I've not actually been told what Torch would do. Fraser, is she being serious? I did say she was new. So fucking new that she doesn't know the job description. Hey, I'm sat right here. You don't need to talk about Why me. Why is she here? I'd have her sorting our admin. We desperately need Oi, it. Oi, I'm fucking sat here, all right? Oh, obviously Fraser and Colonel Stevenson have seen something in me. I'm no one's secretary, and I'm certainly not your assistant. Did you have to be such a prick? I'll go after her. What's up with you today? Oh shit. Is this the moment where you start playing the friend? I thought we were friends. Tommy, speak to me. You have no idea what it's been like, Chris. Lizzie, wait. I just need some air. Ignore him. <laughs> he doesn't even know me and he's already doubting me. Well, just remember that he's not in charge. I am. Are you coming back in? No. I'm going to call a friend. Okay, but just be careful. We don't know what we're facing here. Yeah, I know. Don't let Tommy get you down. He's just been here longer than us. We don't know what the effects are. Yeah. I know. All right. Liz, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I just needed a chat. Who are you? Just left headquarters, heading home. How's today? Honestly. Why? What's happened? Did you find out more about the rebirth tea? Well, I got hired. You what? Long story. That captain put a good word in for me. I'm in Tiptree now. Tiptree? Where? Why were you there? Something they're working on. Met this guy who's part of the team. Try flirting. I shut him down. He's now being an asshole. Want me to have a word with the colonel? No, God no. I just needed a friend to talk to. Well, I'm glad it was me. Today was weird without you at the lockers. Yeah, you'll have to get used to it. So, what is the rebirth team then? I'm not entirely sure still, if I'm honest. When I made it onto the rebirth sector, they had a lot of files about my great-grandfather when he worked at Torchwood. Torchwood? Yeah, calm down about that. I know how you get so excited. Are they Torchwood? I don't think so. I, I don't know. Oh, let me know. I want to try being bold. You know that. Oh, well, mate. Lizzie? Yeah? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'll wait. No, don't worry. I've got to go. Oh, right. You sure you're okay? Positive. 
I'll catch up with you later. Sorry for interrupting. No worries. It's just an old colleague. What can I do to help? It's getting late now. In the morning, I'll be performing an autopsy on the fox that climbed out of that hole. I, I just need an assistant. Tommy's got a weak stomach and Fraser, well, he's the boss, you know? So you're asking the new girl? Why? Well, thought we could properly get to know each other. You saved my life, after all. <laughs> and to repay me, you're making me help you with an autopsy? I know. I'm awful. <laughs> all right. Do you have a hotel or house sorted? Fraser's sorting that out now. Did you want to come back in? Your food's getting cold. <sighs> I suppose so. I'll speak up if Tommy kicks off again. Oh, what are we even doing here, man? Council meeting. There's been a string of complaints made to the council about this hole. Right. So the question is, why aren't they doing anything? And what are the locals saying? How should I know? And why does it matter? Whilst Chris and Lizzie take a look at that fox, it doesn't hurt to learn more. Come on, there's two free seats over there. Oh, we're not staying for long, are we? Stop moaning. Thank you all for coming. I understand the concerns of you all regarding these mysterious circumstances. Someone's stealing our pets. Calm down. My youngest went missing three days ago, and nothing's been done. Order, please. Nothing will get done if we interrupt and cause distress. Now, on to business. There have been several complaints made about a series of disappearances in the rural Tiptree area. I can confirm that we had a thorough search of the area, and nothing was found. Order! This is definitely a larger issue with the community. You're telling me, it was like an episode of Jeremy Kyle. I can certainly understand that this is a much larger issue at hand, and I have called in a team of forensic specialists from London to investigate this matter further. I will respond with further updates. That's not good enough! We want answers now! This keeps happening! Hmm. So who's this man? His name's Darren Smith. He's made tons of complaints about the hole. Obviously no one knows it's a hole, and I doubt he's ever seen one. <laughs> he seems like their leader. He is in the way, I've spoken to him once or twice. Massive prick. Stop interrupting me, sir. The meeting has not concluded. You haven't acted! We've not seen anyone looking around! If you do not cease, I will have to ask you to leave. Don't worry, I'm going. Let's follow him. I'll do the talking. Why are you? I'm just bad with people. I'm good with people too. Excuse me. Tommy! <sighs> what do you want? You're Darren Smith, right? That's right. Who are you? Hey mate, my name is Tommy Benton. Uh, this is my associate, Fraser. Uh, we heard that you were staying in there. Uh, we're here to help. Oh, well, we're not doing a very good job so far. That's why we're here. But it seems you want to act more than your mayor does. Mayor Chapman's a disgrace. He's always been lazy. Then you could provide us with the relevant information to help solve what's happening here. You've talked about the animals disappearing. What's that about? Well, I would have said in my letters. I've had two of my own cats go missing. They're running away. Something is scaring them. Do you know if it's happening from anywhere particular? I think it's from the woods. Probably is. I've been based there for the past few days, and I've been picking up some weird frequencies. Tommy. We're not sure yet, but it's something that's affecting the animals. Whatever it is, it gives everyone an uneasy feeling. I see. Is there anything else you can tell us? Well... I'd say take the Mel Waters case from 1997. Some conspiracy nutter. Please just look. We will. We promise. I hope you keep it. Everyone else I've spoken to calls me crazy. We like crazy in our organisation, Mr Smith. We tend to listen to what others may call impossible. It's what we do. But yes, we will look at that Mel Waters case. Thank you for your time. Uh, we'll be in touch. Tommy, be careful not to share too much information. Well, he's not stupid, Fraser. 
He knows some of what's going on around here. We're not to involve civilians, that's rule one. Rule one is actually not to be a bell end and closely follows by don't release any classified information. Which you were starting to do. Calm down, will ya? We've got it in hand. Have we? This isn't exactly ideal working conditions, but it'll have to do. I imagine you prefer your lab. Exactly. Could you make the notes for me? Sure. I'll record this on my phone too. Thanks. <clears throat> right. This is Christopher Adams from the Torchwood Rebirth Division, joined by Elizabeth Hathaway. Day two into the Tiptree Hole investigation. At the end of day four, Tommy Benton discovered a dead fox near the hole, which had not been spotted there before. Tommy Benton, second in command at Torchwood Rebirth, has been located at the Tiptree site since day one. At the time of the procedure, it is day five. Time to begin autopsy. Scalpel, please. Making an incision. Ugh, it's like cutting into cooked meat. Comment noted. Miss Hathaway's comments confirmed. The fox in question has been cooked through. Organs are bleached and discoloured, similar to scoring and sears. What's that? What's what? Something just pulsed. Where? I I didn't see anything. Right there. I see it. Miss Hathaway has located a growth under the right intestine, moving in for a closer inspection. Noted that the organs are sealed together due to the unexplained burns to the internal organs. The growth is no larger than 250 centimetres in diameter. It appears to be largely free of the internal organs. I am now looking to remove the growth for further testing. Oh god, I think I'm going to be sick. Stay calm, Lizzie. Container, Lizzie. The body of the fox is now largely deflated. Putting forward the prognosis that the growth fed off the host before death. Ending recording. Right, this doesn't look like a growth. No? It's more like a placenta. I think this is a living thing. Found anything yet? Nothing on the torture database. There's an encrypted file on the unit one that I have to request access for. Because of course. Let me handle that. I'll give the colonel a call. What the fuck is it? Whatever it is, it's encased in this purple sack. I assume that's the thing that basically fried the fox. I assume so. No other explanation for it. But after the fox died, this placenta must have cooled down significantly. So it's a living creature growing inside a defenseless animal. It entered that hole, Lizzie. It came out with this inside it. But if Tommy measured it, and it was endless, how could the fox have lived? That's what we're here to find out. How long have you worked here? Just under a year now. Why? Is it always like this? It's not usually this graphic. No. This is my first off-site mission. But what exactly is Torchwood? You're asking me? You're the relative of a Torchwood member. Yeah, my great-grandfather. I don't exactly keep tabs on him. Fair enough. Well, Torchwood has been many things. But from what I've read, it used to be an organisation that was outside of the government entirely. Ran specifically by the monarchy. It had jurisdiction where other government bodies like UNIT didn't. But now it's part of UNIT. Remember five years ago, when all of those kids kept freezing in the streets? Yeah. That was one of the last recorded missions by that version of Torchwood. We know that the original team is still scattered in places, like America and Wales. Fraser keeps tabs on it now. We're a 
different Torchwood. We're what you might call the legal version of Torchwood. But we're within the government. You might be classic Torchwood material at this rate. Think this place will have anything? That recording wasn't fake. Try and see if you can get anything else. I'll talk to the shop owner. The recording said two of three, so I'll talk to the colonel and try to get the last one. Thanks, Tommy. We'll show them to the team later. This stays between us for now, okay? Sure. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Hi, I was hoping you might be able to help me. I'm looking for a rare coin. It might be in a set, possibly found discarded or left behind. Uh, We have plenty of those, sir. Uh, We have our digging parties every weekend to look for antiques. You will find these across the shop. What about belt buckles? What kind of game are you playing? Excuse me? Are you messing with our community? I'm sorry? Uh, What are you talking about? We've been finding these buckles for months, and now suddenly you show up? You're new in town. Have you been doing this on purpose? I can assure you I, I am not. I've been hired by the council to investigate into the hole and some of the strange events that have been going on around it. Well, then you'd best follow me. Sure. Sorry to bring you out the back like this. I don't show these on sale, they're too unique. Of course. So, you have something? Too many. Bloody hell. I have hundreds. But like you said, they're disregarded. I thought at first it was just old relics that could be improved. But then... Then you realised there was something more to these belt buckles. Yes. Look at this one. Harriet Jones, 2006 to 2016? What is this? Specialist coins. I tried to track down when this was made, but it's new. It could have been faked. Then have a look at this old thing. Roosevelt, 1943. A presidential coin. These were known as Roosevelt Dimes. So, what's so special about this? Well, these dimes were made after he died, as well as other presidents. But Roosevelt didn't die until 1945. Right. What's stranger is, look at the signia on the side of the coin. United Kingdom? But Roosevelt was an American president. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Same question applies for the Harriet Jones coins. And why are they welded to the belt buckles? I think it's related to that hole that everyone's frightened of. Me too. Then, there was this one. Memorial Day, 2000. Look at the signia on the back. In those we remember... Weird, right? These could all be fake. The metal is true copper. The impressions made on the copper to produce this are made professionally. These were produced in factories to be sold on. So? Well, the industry of producing coppers is a unique and expensive one. Some production dates are left behind on the print, including the initials or the names of the printer. That buckle you're holding, the Memorial Day one, my name is on that buckle. But I did not print that buckle. I found it in the street near my shop. If this is some cruel joke, I want to know. These buckles are causing me nothing but anxiety. I will do my best to solve this for you. I'm sorry what's been happening to this town, but I will fix this. Any luck? Stevenson is trying. You look pale, are you alright? I'll explain in the car. We have to get back to the others. Oh, you're back. We are. Colonel Stevenson has given us access to the case from 1997, codenamed Mel Waters. Mel Waters? I've got the files here. Uh, There's a set of recordings from a radio station in Washington, D.C. Well, let's hear them, then. On it. Ignore the music. This is a recording from the broadcast. Well, that's true. 
Um, well, my uh, everyone's dogs are scared of the hole. Yeah, they're talking about dog. another hole. No, that's a very good point. In other yeah, words, other true. other dogs won't go anywhere near the hole. This is a recurring you know, my, problem. My dogs will follow me everywhere. I mean, you know, no matter where I go, they're you know, except except to the well. Mm -hmm. Same you stuff know, about the animals. Possibly at a grid point on the planet. Are we saying this is the uh, same hole? No. It's still being monitored in America to this day. It was discovered by a man called Mel Waters. This is a recording of him called The Coast AM Radio to talk about a story. Then what happened? That hole was used as a rubbish tip, where the dead pets were thrown down, but later came back to life. So, it's a resurrection hole? Oh, we have got to pick a better name than that. No idea, but we know there is some extraterrestrial origin. Do we though? The hole is naturally forming, it's here on Earth. Anything could have caused it. We've been given access to two recordings. How many in total? Three. Colonel Stevenson was struggling to gain access to the third recording. He'll get back to us. Tommy, play the second recording. Sure thing. I was pretty uh, ticked off that they stole my belt. I sold a number of these similar belt What's all this anyway, about this belt guy, buckles? Hey, you bought one of my belt buckles. Shh. I had three coins, you know, that I had affixed to it in bezel. There was a coin with Winston Churchill, a coin with Joseph Stalin, and there was a coin signed with Franklin Roosevelt. So we're looking, we're looking at the coins there, and we're noticing there it is a 1943 Roosevelt sign. Franklin Roosevelt was still alive in 1943. We had a dime. There's so, no way it belt buckles? This guy is really curious. Yes, to coming from a hole. Fucking buckles from a hole. Chris, enough of the sarcasm. That's my job. We've seen foxes come out of the hole alive. Speaking of which, what did you find with the fox? Take a look behind us. What the fuck is that? A placenta. Something was growing inside that creature. Whatever it is, it literally cooked that fox until it died. Then, it cooled down into a solid mass. I was about to open it. Please go ahead. We need to learn anything we can. Get this for the record, Lizzie. Chris is about it. That's what's for the record. Is there any need to record this? Like I said, it's just for the record. We're all here. That's enough for now. Alright, fine. Lizzie, don't worry about it. Right. Beginning the incision. Cut made. Opening the sack. You may want to step back for this, just in case. Alright, sure. Guys? God. Oh, I've got to be sick. Step away, Tommy. One second. It's a seal. Okay, examining the creature. It's definitely dead. Underdeveloped arms and legs. Arms and legs? It's a seal. No, it just looks that way to us. Um... It's eyes? Show me. Oh. Oh, God! What? It has human eyes. It can't have. What is this thing? Oh, whatever you are, you poor thing. You can't seriously feel sorry for it. What did it do to us exactly? It killed that fox. That's right, because in the bottomless hole, it killed a fox, then impregnated itself into the fox while still growing. Tommy found it dead in the first place, so the creature didn't kill the fox. It's innocent. If it helps, I don't think it suffered. The fox wasn't a strong host. We need access to that third recording. The belt buckle route showed that there are variants of our world through that hole. So, what do you want to do? I want to go into the hole. <laughs>